What's good with it in the hood with it? Welcome back to the Collective Clips where you already know we get it in, right? But before we get it in today, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content that I'm kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support. We're going up on this channel and it's all because of you. Very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much, man, for all your support. I'm humbled, right? So <clears throat> what's the worst thing you could ever, 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 and I mean ever do in the prison system in California. And I say California because every prison system is different. I can only speak on what I know, right? But like Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, they wiggle. They get with the program, right? I'm pretty sure a lot of what I'm going to say is pertaining to them exact states. And then as far as the East Coast, fuck 50. They ain't playing over there, right? But in California, it being it's so racial and political, man, there's not very much you can do without stepping on someone's toes and getting caught up. But this situation right here I'm going to speak on, you cannot take lightly. You're not supposed to just indulge without really having it like that. So there's a pecking order and a hierarchy in prison. Not talking about gang issues, right? In the gangs, we already know what it is, man. You are that one or you're not that one. And a lot of guys are in the middle striving to be that one that will never get there. And some will. You know, it's not a lottery system. Hey, you're judged on the content of your character and the work you put in. That's what it is. Hey, a lot has to go into it. Maybe you might know someone, you might have a homeboy that's already there, has status, and boom, he could pull you in. And it ain't what you know so much as who you know. That's life, right? Even out here on the calles with a job, man, you tell your primo, hey, hook me up, hey, hook me up. Hey, if I got you, I got you. And then you get there and, hey, he told everybody that he was the foreman, he was doing big things. Really? He's just the fucking vato driving the forklift. Like, why, eh? And then you pass him up. Now you're the man. Now he's like, hey, hook me up. Hook me up, fool. Get me up there, man. Get me up upstairs. That's how it goes in life, man. You only get what you got coming, man, by your efforts. Okay? It's just like YouTube, by our efforts. So here's the one thing that I know, and there's several things, but here's the one thing I learned along the line, and I got a story about you're not supposed to ever do in prison unless you got papers, right? Money. And that's gambling. Gambling is a very addictive thing. Something in the brain, even in my brain, tells me, get it, get it, get it, right? And usually, I don't got it to get it, right? It takes money to make money. And in prison, there are those, man, that are paying like they're weighing. There are those that got a supportive ass old lady, a torta out there really getting it. You know, welcome to Burger King, may I take your order? And meanwhile, she's on the phone all night accepting them calls, taking her old man's orders. So it's all good, right? If you got money coming in, then you could be a little frivolous with your money, right? You could be a little, you don't have to be as frugal as those like myself that did a lot of prison time that didn't have no paper coming in. And let me tell you, that's the worst position to be in when you're in prison is to not have no money or nothing coming in. You're all on your own. Now that means you got to get straight to the hustle and everyone got to hustle in prison. There's several hustles, whether it's working in the kitchen, sewing garments, tattooing, drawing pictures, hey, anything you could think of has already been done. They've already thought of it. There's a lot of intelligent people in prison that made some unintelligent decisions, okay? Um, it doesn't mean people are stupid because they're in prison. It just means that that day, that day was a, they made a stupid move and got caught. That's it. Or, you know, those that were a little bit smarter that day and going a little bit harder in the paint caught them. But here's some knowledge you can't get in college. Gambling, just like using drugs on a prison yard, can be your demise. That's where a lot of people fell in the game. Them yards, they're not fucking around out there. There's killers and lifers and people that'll take your life over $20 just to make you holla. They get paid to do the wild thing, right? So I'm going to tell you right now, if you indulge in gambling, if you ain't got the money to pay, Vatos need money. They need that. There's a lot of people that run gambling tables. They run the tables. And everybody knows who runs the tables on that yard, who runs the tickets. You know, Super Bowl's tomorrow, man. There's going to be a lot of people having squares, numbers, tickets, a lot going on because anything that a man can see as a hustle in prison, he's going to do that. That's just what it is. And if you want to indulge, if you want to put a few envelopes on it, a couple sopas, maybe a deodorant or two, that's cool if you got it, but never go beyond your means. That's just like here in life. Never get credit, homie, because you can't fill that up with unleaded, right? If you ain't got enough to pay back and you know it deep down inside, it's only going to be a wreck and it's going to be your demise. And in prison, they play for keeps. It's not, oh, okay, we're going to sue you. They don't sue you in there. You know, they fucking shoe you on top of your head and they hit you with the piece. And that's it. Anyone who gets caught up in a gambling situation, and I'm going to tell you a story right now about it, it can be deadly. And it's one thing in prison I learned to shy away from and I was cool. 
So let me explain to you a couple situations. So I had a homeboy. He was addicted to gambling. We were in the gym, gym living, three yard. His all day long, they used to play a game in there called AC Ducey. I can't tell you the details of the game. I'm sure there's guys who have played it, but I think it's a high card, low card type game. But anyways, these volatiles at this particular table were gambling to the next level. When I say the next level, these whole tables were filled with commissary, um, package. They, they even had tables that it was just package stuff. Because one thing I could tell you about prison, and anyone who's been there will tell you too, package uh, products are worth more than commissary products. Because in the packages, you're getting different types of items that you can't necessarily get on canteen. So the people that are in there balling and really having it their way, they think they're doing big things off their packages. Oh yeah, bro, I got that fucking super speed stick, sharp deodorant, right? That good shit off the package. Ooh, walking horse, you said it. Damn, homie, right? So it becomes like almost double in value. That's just the way prison. No, it's not old school. Hey, I got a carton of smokes. There are bottles that back packs, right? When I was in prison, it's probably changed. A pack of frajos was $400, uh, uh, $400 commissary or $200 cash on the yarda. I know. I was balling out of control at one point. One point. Um, that's just the way it is. It might have went up, might have went down. I remember one stick was $25. When I say stick, that's one cigarette. You bust them on down, make five pieces out of them, five little michas. There you go, Right. Um, you could sell them for like fucking five or ten dollars each if you're a hustler. Um, it's just like the crack game in prison. Everybody wants it, and if you got it, supply and demand, homie. Bam. They want that ketchup bottle. What movie is that from? Anyway, so trip out. Um, the homie was really into the gambling thing, and I remember we even had a talk, and I was like, hey, bro, you're doing too much. Hey, you don't got anything anymore. Because you win some, you lose some. Some days you hit, you get everything back. Some days you're asked out. And he was one of those guys, he just liked being at the tables all the time. He would win, lose, whatever, right? But this particular day, there was an Africano brother, a black dude that was smacking everyone's head. He was on top of their shit. He was on a hot streak. That vato was like that dude, Mickey, right? That vato that plays Baccarat. He was on his shit. He couldn't lose, eh? And I pulled the homeboy to the side, and he was all frustrated. Fucking, man, fucking, man, I appreciate you, man, right? He was on his fucking American me shit. Man, that shit was shit, man, right? He was like, damn, bro, I ain't even got deodorant to use anymore. Can I use a little pedazo, a little piece? I said, no, you can't use none of my shit. But here, look, I got a package coming in the next couple days, bro. He was like, I don't know if I can make it that much. Well, you're going to have to, right? And I'm going to lend you a little something. I need you to go ahead and get some get backs, right? And uh, if you don't, bro, I'm going to chalk it up because you're the homie. But I know, I know you got it in you, right? That vato was frustrated. He was like a fucking chick out there on the block. That just, she just had too much chorra. He was even walking funny. Just, fuck, hey, right? He was all sad and depressed. A couple days later, my package hits. It wasn't a big package. I had some chick that I had knocked on some hustle shit, right? And she sent me a little bit of money. So anyways, I was like, here, bro, I'm going to give you five deodorants. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you a couple jars of coffee. You know, a few sopas. Make that wiggle. So, of course, he went and worked it however he worked it. Bubbled up. Got the double up like a like the crack game. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you 10 for a 20, a double. And so he did the doubleization. Went to the table and smacked them, right? Had all the commissary. Now he's big balling. That about was just fucking using deodorants he didn't even need. He's just opening them. He's all happy and shit. It worked out for him, okay? A year later, it didn't quite work out for him. He found himself on that same table. This time, I'm not helping him out. This time, he's on his own, right? This time, some of the same black dudes that he was gambling with, because one thing about prison is the same guys that gamble do it all the time. It's the same old crowd, right? He got involved in a game of uh, Texas Hold'em that he should have just held him because he ain't from Texas, right? Shit. Ain't nothing coming there from stairs to queers. And you look like you're going to make you queer, buddy. This vault should have just stood away from that because they wanted to see how they could stack shit high. And they did. He got mollywopped, beat up very, very, very bad, leaking everywhere. And it's because he made a bet that his ass couldn't cash. He said, hey, don't trip. I got you, bro. I got you some package deodorants. They're in my locker. And the black dude knew him, trusted him because they had played a lot. So as soon as the black dude smacked his shit, one, he was like, yeah, go get my deodorants. And dude could pray I, I, after chow, bro, after chow. And he's like, nah, bro, just open your locker and give me my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what happened was, what had happened was is he didn't have shit. You know, his shit, all he had was that baking soda they give you in the oil, right? He was struggling. Um, and that black dude felt some type of way. So he waited, he waited till we caught him later on in the evening time in the day room and him and a couple of the brothers, man. Fuck that dude up very, very, very bad, right? It caused the fuck, it caused chaos. One man's bullshit can cause the whole fucking dorm to stink. That's just what it was. Okay, so let me tell you about this young white dude. 
So this wood gets there, brother, right? He's a young white dude, man. Um, he had money. No doubt about it. He had money. He got there. He's balling out. He never was without. He got visits every weekend. His old lady made sure that his money was nice, right? You could tell this dude was balling. He had the, this is how you could tell in prison. They got the nice clothes, little chain, little wedding ring. You know, motherfuckers that are doing it like that, either one or two things. Either they're somebody and they're having it their way, right? Or they just got money coming in. Or they're a lifer. You'll notice a lot of the lifers got a lot of property. They've been around for a long time. They've get, they've gotten shit from, you know, cellies that have left or just whatever over the years. Um, this guy came in with the chain, with the, the ring. I mean, he was balling and everyone knew it. So, of course, these guys lured him to the poker table. Because that's what they do. Hey, what's up, huh? Right? Shit. You know, it's usually the brothers doing it. What's happening, right? Now, on this yard where I was at, right? I was out of state. Um, anybody could play with anybody. There's politics, of course, and you pretty much stick to your own, but this guy was a non-affiliated white. He was what you would consider a wood that, of course, if push came to shove, he was going to ride with the white guys, but he wasn't from their little gangs. He was just, he could just do what he wants. That's how it was. And the brothers knew this. They weren't trying to fuck him or take advantage of him or anything. They was just trying to play him out of his pockets. If they could turn his pockets inside out and make him look like a jackrabbit, he can hop on out the way, right? But they were going to make it, make sure he left leaking. So, they got, they got him. I would see him from a distance like, oh, there's Valtos. They hooked them, right? Whatever, right? And I got a deodorant on it against them. And they were working him. They were cheating him. Now, of course, cheating ain't cool. But if he was fucking susceptible to it, hey, this is prison. I ain't going to tell on him. Hey, fool, you're getting worked. Whatever. Work that motherfucker, right? He kind of knew it towards the end, but it was already too late. So anyways, this Valtos, they're gambling. They're going, right? They're going. And it's back and forth, back, back and forth. And like I said, you can't beat the cheater, right? So this vault was hitting him like fucking, what's his name did the other day? 21 Savage. Worked him. They're working him with the marked cards and all that. And he starts getting hip to it. But none of the white dudes are going to fucking back his play because they're like, nah, you're over there playing with the blacks. That's on you. You chose. So they're going to use your shit. They're going to work you, right? So everyone was like, kind of like, whatever, right? So this guy's calling his old lady several times, send money, send money. Hit this vault's P.O. box. Fucking send money on his book. All kinds of shit, right? Well, it gets to the point where his old lady is feeling some type of way. She only has so much money, so he gets left, right? Or I think he got left. Anyways, he wasn't getting money like he was. Chain was gone. Wedding ring. Some black dude was wearing it as a pinky ring. Look, balling with the homies, right? There was all kinds of shit going on. Well, here's some knowledge you can't get in college, right? This guy was like, fuck it, man. I'm going to try one last thing. He had hit for like a $100 package or whatever. It wasn't much, but it was enough to put on the table to try to get his get backs. He was already deep. Very deep, right? Trip out what happens. So he's out there on the table. I'll never forget this day. They were high stakes gambling. They were playing for dimes. That's 10 cents uh, a hand or something like that. Anyways, it got crazy, right? So this white dude hits straight flush. Oh, no, 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 no. My bad. Um, excuse me. He had four deuces, right? Balling. Four of a kind. What beats four of a kind? A straight flush. And a royal flush, right? They're playing poker. Texas hold him. So he has the four twos. So he's failing himself. I can see his eyes. His fucking eyelids are doing jumping jacks, right? His eyelids are tweaking out like Danny Masterson in the fucking suicide cell right now, right? He's all happy. So he gets brave. And he was like, I put a thousand on it. A thousand dimes. Black dude kind of looks at him and was like, what'd you say? And he said, a thousand dimes, bro. Black dude says, you know, if you don't pay, bro, you know, you, you already know, right? So I'm just, we're going to figure this one out. You might have to give me your cone bread, right? White dude's like, Psh, he ain't tripping. What's the odds of anyone beating this, right? This is the first time he ever got a good hand. You know, hey, all this bullshit they're dealing, this was a straight up game. Wasn't no one cheating on this one. They had already worked them out of house and home. So now he's just surviving. So anyways, look at trip out. Bob was looking at his fucking cards. He's feeling himself. I remember I'm looking, then I go to the black dude and I'm just looking like, he bobo to see. This is going to have his head up his ass faster than the Hancock book that Put it up that fat dudes, right? And the black dude's like, okay, fuck it then. Ten. That dude was like, man, fuck that. A thousand dollars. How about that? The white dude said, right? Black dude said, <laughs> ten thousand dollars. What's happening? Right? I had never seen nothing to get this intense, right? This Bob also said, let's just make it 20. Double, right? Black dude said, I call, right? That white boy put his motherfucking, his deuces down like, when that motherfucker dropped the royal flush on him. Sass. 
all in clubs, right? That motherfucker's heart just sunk, right? He's like, I'm going to go ahead and need you to fucking call whoever you got to call, bro. I'm going to need that money in my books in 24 hours, bro, or you can't be on this yard. That dude went to the white guys like, like he was, like he was kicking, right? Hey, man, see the way it works out with my bank account. White dude said, nah, bro, that's on you. You're all racing everything, but this one time, bro, it is on you, homie. And I remember looking at the woods and I was like, brother, right? Mm-mm. He had no more coffee. He had nothing to give him. And the white dudes don't play, man. One thing about the white guys is they're going to teach you to learn your lesson. Oh, they're going to learn you today. Facts. So this guy's over there talking to the black dude. And again, me and all the homies were laughing like, fuck, okay, they're going to fucking bone him, right? He's in trouble. And black dude's right there on the phone like, call your people, bro. So he tries to call his chick. She answers, right? <laughs> you don't understand. Sell my truck. Do whatever you got to do. These guys are going to get me, right? Um... And whatever she says, she says, I wasn't the fucking cucaracha under his huarache on that phone, right? But I could tell you right now, he looked flabbergasted. He looked, uh, he was pretty, pretty red, right? He looked, he was like a bull's jersey. He was shook up. Well, he didn't pay. So he tries to lock it up, okay? And that's what gambling does to people. It fucks their head all up. They already know. It, it, it's, it's, it's just like on the streets when I was going to the casino, man, I just had to win. I had to win until I had nothing, right? So I could understand. He was like, fuck, he was trying to borrow shit from people. It's like, bro, you're not going to pay $20,000 in fucking oatmeal. It ain't going to happen, homie, right? And so he's like, fuck it. I'm just going to sock some knack, some J-cat, whoever's here. I'm going to hit him and go to the hole and try to wiggle. You think the brothers was going out like that? This motherfucker all frustrated. Listen, he lost like 20 pounds that day. He was all stressed out. Anxiety like a motherfucker, right? This fool swings on this J-Cat dude that's sitting there playing fucking Uno with some other weirdo, right? And that dude gets up and whips his ass and then all the blacks stomp him out, right? They didn't put no metal in him, but he got stomped out pretty damn bad. Worse than the homie did, you know, over there in Sad F. It was pretty bad, right? I tell you a story and I say this to say, say what is, what's the real. I say that to say this. Gambling, unless you have the funds and unless you're doing it for fun, in prison is a no-no. Don't never let it get a grip on you. Those are the things, those some of the things, man, that could fuck a person's whole career off. I've seen solid dudes, solid, righteous, striving, Norteños, Sureños, Wood, Skins, Kumi, Crip. I've seen it all. Every fucking different ethnicity, except for the Usos. The Usos don't play that shit. They, they're, they're different. Them and the Asians, they kind of just stay away from that shit. Natives, Paisas, everybody. Um, I've seen a lot of people booked on the yard. Hey, what happened? Gambling debt. Damn. What happened? Volta couldn't pay. What happened? The Lions lost, right? Just shit like that. It's over and over again. Anyone who's been in prison will tell you. Now, if you got it, Holmes, and you could not, and you got restraint, and a lot of men that go in with restraint, and they're like, nah, I've seen people get turned out. Like, oh, no, bro, I don't gamble. I'm cool off that shit. Next thing you know, they're like, hit me with your best shot. Come on, ace. Come on, ace. Come on, ace. When all the aces are already on the table, like, hey, puto, you can get a king, but you can't have an eight. That's just how it is. So anyways, yeah, man, prison is very dangerous. I've seen people get their whole shit split, been booked. Um, and I've seen a lot of people will do that move, man. They'll wiggle on yards. And I've always thought it was, it was funny, man. You know, Vatos will lock it up. It's like you went your whole career gangbanging, investing time through the struggle and, and being about it. And a lot of dudes, very political dudes, righteous. And then they go on a yard with some dude and they fucking lock it up over a $10 bet that they can't pay. Over 10 fucking measly ass dollars. Happens all the time. Anyways, man, that's one of the... Don't do it in prison. I advise you, any of you youngsters that are going, I would hope you don't go, right? Because it's not a good place. It's not a place of, of lavish D for anybody. It's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate, desolate place of hopelessness. But if you do happen to catch a case and you're going to prison, remember Gunner said it first. Don't go in there thinking you're the man because you got a little bit of money and gamble. I remember there was a vault. His name was Gunner, just like my name. He was a South Sider. That vault that went in there... Same type of hype. Little youngster, parents taking care of him. He had the flat screen TV. He had the, the boom box he bought for 300 off the yard. He had the Super 2, you know, he had the Super 2 and the Super 3. He was doing big things, CL20s, fucking just, you know, everything that you can get in prison that ain't shit out here, but means something in there. Getting papers every day, doing his thing with the R. I mean, he was balling. Two months later, the Vata got involved in gambling, and he was over there telling me, a northerner, don't tell anyone. You want to buy the TV? Nah, hell not, nah, right? That's guy already got two of them. That's just how it was. That's why I never indulged or involved myself in gambling in prison. That's a big no-no. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. And I'm not trying to knock anyone's hustle. 
If there's vatos in there watching this, like, damn, gun, stop hating. I'm not hating, bro. But fuck, you know you're going to stab that dude over $5. Stop it. With that being said, move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive to struggle, the struggle to strive. I'm going to continue to do what I do and provide the best possible content. I can right here on the Collective Clips as well as Gunners Collective TV. If you're not tapped in there, that's my big channel. That's where the shit really goes down. Make sure you tap in, man. I got bangers every day. I want you guys to have a great weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl with your family tomorrow. Keep your shit on exorcist. That means on swivelization. Don't get caught up. There's going to be a lot of disgruntled fans out there that are all mad because the team that they just started cheering for last month lost. You know what it is, man. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I truly believe in, and that's the betterment of all people, man, and trying to detour some of these guys that ain't really up on game and give them some glitch out, some knowledge they can't get in college. Hey, look, bro. You're going to go to prison? Fine, if that's where you want to go, homes. But there's rules and regulations, bro. Some that the homies won't tell you because they're going to work you. Bang, bang.